This is Kerbal Space Program 2, and we're about to see some gameplay for my hands-on play session on the 9th of February. Now, we've got a whole load of different things I want to look at, both in this video as well as some upcoming videos. We start with a very quick launch here, and then jump into the vehicle assembly building in just a moment. Now, this was my absolute first launch within KSP2. I chose a simple stock rocket for that event, but you'll see in just a moment it does go spectacularly wrong. Now, as for this play session, this is a part of the KSP2 preview event, which took place in the European Space Agency in the Netherlands last week. The event itself was arranged by a private division, who also, just so you know, arranged for accommodation and travel to that event. And there we have it, I didn't get very far on that launch, did I? Yes, some very obvious mistakes made there. At any rate, let's jump into the VAB. Immediately, for those of you who are familiar with KSP1, you'll notice some interface changes here. The UI has been overhauled in quite a few ways. One which you'll notice immediately if you're familiar with KSP1 are the color-coded uh, categorizing of parts. Each part here is categorized according to its size, so the red parts, XS, will all fit together, the yellow parts, SM, will all fit together, and so on. It makes it very easy to very quickly snap together all the various parts and components that you want. Now, my plan here was to build an extremely basic rocket, something very, very simple, just enough to get us up into orbit. The developer's intent with the UI changes here then is kind of twofold. On the one hand, they want to retain the complexity that was famous for KSP-1, but on the other hand, they want to make it somewhat easier and more accessible for new users, so trying to please both crowds, and I think that's a very good approach for the game. Some of you more keen-eyed viewers may also have noticed that components are split into categories. For example, on a coupling, they're split between stack separators, radial separators, and so on. Meanwhile, on the fuel tanks, they're split between fuel types. Of course, you're still free to search or filter, it's just that things are now far better organized. Right, so with that extremely basic rocket together, it's now time to head to the launch pad. The launch pad itself has been dramatically overhauled compared to the first game, and now looks, well, much more like a genuine launch pad. You'll also have noticed here that the UI elements have changed, the nav ball has been moved from the center over to the left, meanwhile the time acceleration controls have been moved from the top left hand corner down to the center, making them much more accessible. There's also a number of other UI elements that have been changed, so do feel free to pause the video if you want, so you can take a closer look at those components. And talking of getting a closer look, just having a bit of a closer look at the launch pad here. It all looks suitably impressive, doesn't it? Although you will have noticed that we can clip through some of the scenery. Right, I'm going to go for launch here, and I'm also going to go quiet so you can listen to that audio. Here we go. Hey. Okay, so we are safely off the ground and accelerating upwards pretty nicely. One thing you may have noticed there is that the game audio is very nice. Although in hindsight, I kind of wished I'd gone into the game menu and disabled the background music just so that you could hear the rocket for yourself, but plenty of time for that in the future, I guess. Another thing that I noticed almost immediately was the improved feedback on the controls on the navigation here. So what's changed? Well, as with KSP-1, you use the WASD keys to navigate your ship, but it now feels far more responsive than it ever used to. It's likely going to be one of those things that split the player base a little bit, with some people preferring it, and some people preferring the previous version. Okay, switching to the map here to check on things, maybe add a manoeuvre very shortly. Right now though, we've got to stage, we're running out of fuel. Perfect opportunity then to show you the staging UI. This, I feel, is now far cleaner and much easier to read. We're all looking good up here then. I think there's no issue, and at our altitude, I think about time to add in a manoeuvre. There is a couple of changes here to manoeuvres, actually, so a few things I do want to talk about. We're going to add the manoeuvre right before the uh, apoapsis there. Well, I probably could get a little bit closer, but that should do the trick. 
Now, one thing I noticed here is that this UI element is now far easier to interact with. Before, it was what did the job, but I always found it a little bit finicky. You could kind of click on the wrong thing accidentally, and sometimes it simply wouldn't activate. Our periapsis is a little bit too low there, so we're going to need to increase that, I think. All right, where are we now? So it's a little bit low. One thing that you will remember from a KSP1 is that you can pin the periapsis and the aporapsis. Unfortunately, during this play session, that didn't seem to be working. Right clicking on it didn't do anything. It's something I spoke with to one of the developers and they said it should be a thing. It's just that sometimes it's not working. But do keep in mind that this is early access. This is actually a pre-early access to so the preview event. So hopefully things like that should be fixed at some point. OK, so we're approaching time to conduct the burn for the manoeuvre. Before I do that, though, there is one other thing I want to show you about the improvements to the manoeuvre plan. Actually, there's two things I want to mention here. Firstly, you no longer need to calculate when to initiate the burn. It's now very, very straightforward. You simply initiate the burn when the timer reaches a T minus zero. The second change, and this one I think is a pretty big deal, is the new burn time red line. You can see right here that your maneuver plan now includes a little red segment and that indicates the duration of the burn itself. So when you reach the start of the red line, it's when you initiate the burn and you conclude the burn at the end of the red line. Very simple and very useful to boot. Talking of which, it's now time to initiate our burn and we're going to do that on a T at minus zero. Three, two, one. Time to go full burn. So we got ourselves into a pretty decent uh, orbit there. Not perfect, but good enough. And this really gives us a great opportunity to take a look at Kerbal and the brand new planetary graphics. Keep in mind that KSP2 is not just a modified KSP1. The new game has been rebuilt completely from scratch, and that's included rebuilding the planets. Now, I've had a look at many of the planets within the game. In fact, there'll be another video very shortly having a look at each of the planets within the Kerbal star system. For now, though, we'll have a look at down at this planet. And, you know, I'm kind of torn on it. On the one hand, I think the graphics here are really nice, especially some of the terrain there. Look at that. But also feel that some of the uh, textures, specifically on the clouds, look a little bit low resolution. So on the one hand, uh, it's greatly improved here. On the other hand, I think there's still room for some further improvements. But yeah, overall, that still looks really nice, doesn't it? We're slowly approaching the planetary terminator there, but let's cut round to the other side so we can have a bit of a look at the sunset and the atmospheric scattering. Now, around the other side of the planet, we're about to uh, undergo re-entry and it's another opportunity to look at a different side of Kerbal. Again, we've got some, I think, really nice planetary details on the surface there, but less so, I think, when it comes to the clouds. So really highlighting that distinction between some of the nice graphics on the surface and some of the, well, slightly less appealing quality of the clouds themselves. Again, though, keep in mind this is in early access, so some features and some details are missing. One thing that was notably missing from the uh, preview event was the atmospheric re-entry burning effects. I've sped things up here a whole lot just so that you can see that for yourself and feel free to go back and pause it as and where you feel necessary. So it's unclear whether or not the burning effects for re-entry will be added in for uh, release for the uh, early access release, but they certainly weren't in during the preview event. The water actually looks pretty nice here, although again, there's a few graphical issues here and you'll notice that there's no water physics when we splash down here. Ultimately though, it's not something which negatively affects the game, at least not in a mechanical manner. Hopefully though, it is something, both the water effects here as well as the re-entry effects, as something that is going to be added in during the next few weeks or perhaps the next few months. So that's the first look at Kerbal Space Program 2. Just simply getting up into orbit and getting back down. Went through a few UI elements here and a brief look at the vehicle assembly building. Now there are some other videos coming up. Specifically next, I'm going to take a very close look at the planets in the Kerbal star system. Giving you some insight as to what to expect from them and how they have been improved over the previous version of the game. There'll also be another video after that, so do keep an eye out for all of these. They should be there very soon. 
As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.